Able's in on air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs. The Orthodox Union. The Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Abel Dinonair has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times. New York Parrot Online Newspaper. Muslim Community Report www.thisisthebronx.info and www.h.com Ableton On Air is a member of the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences Boston, New England chapter. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs concerns and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. On this, on this edition, we go into part two of what is a DSP, direct support professional, for working for people with disabilities. Um, on the phone, let, we are uh, talking to um, today we're going to talk to Green Mountain Support Services, but before we get to that, we would like to thank our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, um, Muslim Media Corporation, um, and many others, including the partners, uh, partners of the uh, Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable the, the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition and uh, um, Mus Muslim Media Corporation and many, many, many others. Um, we would like to welcome Karen Perry, the um, Human Resources Director of Green Mountain Support Services. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you for joining us on this edition of Able to Learn Air. Thank you for inviting me, Lawrence. Uh, it's so nice to be here. I, I'm excited to have this time with you today. Okay. So what exactly is your job with Green Mountain Support Services, and how has that impacted um, the world of staffing? Because I know during COVID it, it has um, really been a problem. Yes, no. Go ahead. Well, my function is the Human Resources Director for the agency, and with that, I oversee all aspects of human resources, so that, that would include everything from hiring, recruiting, employment, benefits, compensation, risk management, safety, and a multitude of other things. And yes, it has been a very complicated time for us because of COVID for the last year and a half or so, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, so how has it in, how has COVID um, impacted um, the field of disabilities on your end being human resource uh, director? Well, I, I can tell you, from my own viewpoint and my own personal stance, I was hired for Green Mountain during COVID. So I've been with the agency about a year and a half now, and I'm actually, I work remotely for the agency and I'm in Michigan. So due to the COVID constraints that were going on, I interviewed from here in Michigan and I've done this job for the last year, year and a half or so from um, my home office here in the state. I, I will be making trips out there to spend a week every quarter with the staff and the group at Green Mountain. 
So I, I'm just coming back from last week in which I spent out there and had a fantastic time. But, you know, some of these things are due to the situation of COVID. And as you brought up, hiring, it, this is not a friendly hiring climate that we're in right now due to COVID. There are so many folks who, it, it, not every state, and we're, we're a little bit more fortunate in Vermont than here in my home state of Michigan. So many folks have become so reliant on these unemployment monies that in, in many situations, they're getting more money from that than they would in taking a regular job. So, you know, that's, that's a fight for all of us as employers right now. Um, as far as because um, I want to talk a little bit more about the people who um, who work in the trenches in other words the direct support professionals the people that work with people with disabilities have those positions of, of DSPs been really impacted um, during COVID? Very much so and it's really exciting and I, and I love talking about our DSPs and in fact Green Mountain Support Services has had in the last I believe five years we have had three DSPs of the year for the state of Vermont and that, that means we're doing something right and I you know as an HR director that's just so exciting for me and to talk about with others but yes they were very much impacted and these two right at the onset of COVID with the social distancing, it was making it increasingly more difficult to interact because, you know, working with the most vulnerable population in society, the last thing we wanted to do was have any any one of our you clients or employees contract um, COVID yeah, because of the work second. that we were doing. So <laughs> we were so fortunate in that our DSPs were so creative in ways to support the folks that, that we support, they came up with, this is just one small example, they came up with over 21 hours a week of Zoom programming. And this consisted of everything from karaoke to cooking classes to Roomba classes to zoo tours, museum tours, anything you could think of to do with an audience on Zoom we were we were doing it and it, we had fantastic turnout it, it our DSPs took turns arranging it and facilitating and I just felt so lucky that we have this fantastic crew of people that we do we we made a difficult situation the best that we possibly could for everyone involved mm-hmm. um okay go ahead wanna... uh, yeah <laughs> Um, how has COVID affected Green Mountain Support Group? How's, how has it really affected? Even though people come up with different schedules and different changes, has, uh, has more DSPs have been, a, have been able to do, like, have, have they been doing more overtime than normal? Um, to be honest, not, not so much. Um, it's been surprising that for me that speaks directly to turnover and believe it or not yeah how has turnover been, been it has turnover been a problem no we have not had any turnover since i began or during the entire period of covid so we've done a, you know we do a lot of cross training we do a lot of filling in for each other and another thing that i'm always so proud to talk about is we never furloughed anyone through this time through COVID. what is that uh being being a human human resource director what what does that mean furlough for those that don't know um laid anyone off so oh, okay we always had work to do we always had work for everyone we never had to even consider laying anyone off see um during my last interview that I had done uh, with somebody from New York, New York is a completely different uh, situation than Vermont. I mean, if there's no, yeah, uh, uh, in terms of keeping people. Um, so, but do you find as a human resource director, then let me ask you this question. Um, in terms of 
uh, the the living wage of a DSP. Okay, do you find that that people in Vermont uh, that people in Vermont stay more than any other place, or um, it um, this goes back to turnover as well? Go ahead. That's a tough one. That is a tough question, Lawrence, but a really good one. You know, I, I can't say that the turnover, the lack of turnover that we have is due to the wages that we're able to pay because you and I both know DSPs are not paid anywhere near yes. the money that, that they're working. You know yes, I mean? they're, it's, they're, a labor, it's a labor of love, too, that people stay for. Absolutely. That's, yeah, that's where I was going with this. I found that this is either this is either in your blood to do this kind of work or it's not. The, the folks who have stayed with us through thick and thin are, are here because they love what mm-hmm. they do. Awesome. They love the folks they're working with, and it speaks to their heart. Um, it's it's not about the money, although you know we're certainly advocating for always more money for health services. Mm-hmm. But it's it's you know for those of us involved, it's not about the money. Okay, go ahead. Have you seen more men go into this field? Oh, good question. Um, I hope you don't mind these questions. Go ahead. No, absolutely not. Fire away. Um, we have, you know, there's, there's a stereotypical thing with support and caregiving and you know, sometimes nursing where people think, well, nurses are always women. Well, not true. And we're seeing that more and more all the time. We're seeing more and more female doctors as far as that goes. So men are just as capable and empathetic as women, I believe. Just many Do you think more, since we, since we said that, do you think men are more... Um, uh, are more compassionate than women or vice versa for this field? Oh boy, that's a good <laughs> You guys have great questions. Um, it depends on the situation, you know? I mean, I, I see that go both ways, but but the folks, the, the men that we do have working for us are very compassionate. So I, I can only speak for the folks that I know. Okay, now, is there a percentage, or and what is the percentage, if you know, is there a percentage of people with with special needs that are becoming DSPs? Honestly, I, I don't know the answer to that. At, at this point, we don't have any. That's not to say that there aren't any throughout the state of Vermont, though, but mm-hmm. I, I honestly don't know. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Go ahead. <laughs> Are DSPs training to treat some, let's say somebody has Alzheimer's? Are they, uh-huh. are they uh, trained for that? Well, our, our DSPs go through a multitude of training. <laughs> we have di- several different platforms that they go through. So we typically put them all through specifics in in general when they start working for us with with a training platform called Reliance, but we also do other trainings. But yes, several of them are geared to specific Trainings including Reliance. trainings including the uh, NADSP, correct? Is that part of it? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. correct. Mm-hmm. Um, now, it, you're a human resource director, so what is the difference between, so people can know, the difference between a director of human resources for an agency and a coordinator is it is it one person coordinating departments how does that work with uh, a nonprofit agency such as yours okay well Lawrence that, that pretty much goes the same whether it's a nonprofit or, or a for-profit business with human resources positions a coordinator typically is the person within the agency who uh, does all the recruiting for positions they post all the jobs they will do all the screening setting up the interviews usually take care of all of the paperwork that's required with having employees if if you would say for example need to change your address or need to 
and a spouse. That would be something that your HR coordinator would handle. Mm. Or benefits or something like that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, um, it, is there a percentage of people that leave the field of DSPs because they can't handle it? Or because, you know, or, or is it mainly be, the reason they leave because of the fact that um, the wages are so low and they have to go work at a place called Amazon or a big box store for some reason? Well, I'll, I'll answer that in a couple different parts if you don't mind there, Lawrence. Go First ahead, all, go ahead. Uh, in, yeah. in regards to, um, you know, asking if, if we would have DSPs leave because of a client or the person that they're supporting, we don't, we've never had anyone leave because of that. There will occasionally be a situation where they're, you know, just like anywhere else in a job, you might have a personality complex. So in those situations, if, if it's, you know, the situation is serious enough, we'll always figure out a way to bring in a different DSP and integrate that person what, in. Yeah. What is meant by, okay, I'm sorry. What is meant by a, a personality conflict? In well, this case, there will there will always be times when you know the person that we're trying to support for some reason doesn't doesn't like us, and you know just maybe you have a different outlook on life, different philosophy about different things. Just you know, just like anywhere else, you're not going to like everyone who you work with. True. Okay, continue with the the other part of the question. You said a couple parts. In regards to them leaving us, you know, that's tough for me because we really, like I said, we haven't had turnover, so we haven't had anyone leaving us. I think we have such a, a robust and strong benefits plan with so many additional perks to working for Green Mountain Support Services. Between that and the, and the family feeling that we have for the employees, I, I believe that's why folks are not leaving us. But, you know, I am in conversations with my peers from around the state of Vermont, and most of the time when they talk about their turnover rate, it is due to the wages being lower than what someone could get, say, going out to a, a Walmart or a Rite Aid or Walgreens or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, what are the misconceptions around people with special needs and why some people won't work with people with disabilities? Oh gosh, there are so many and it's really sad and until people actually get in that position, they don't, they'll never know the difference. But, you know, personally, in my own observations, many times misconceptions have been that, that Folks with disabilities are chronically ill or always in pain or, you know, can't leave a full productive life. And there's nothing could be further from the truth. Or or can't or another misconception can't get married. And that's not true. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm sorry. I had to put that in there. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder why now, Lauren, because your wife is right there, too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, that is a big mis- that is a big misconception. It is. It is. It exactly. absolutely is. That and so many more. And um, you know, unfortunately, this country we're surrounded by a lot of very close-minded people. And if <laughs> if a little bit of what we can do is enlighten <laughs> folks to be a little more observant and and open-minded to their neighbors, then we're all going to be better off for it. Mm. Um, so, all right. Is there anything that I did not cover that you might want to put into the conversation? Oh, gosh. Let me think. It's okay. Just being edited. So if you stop, it's fine. Yeah, I, 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 
I, I did watch some of your other shows, so you probably have already touched on this, what the difference was between a personal carry as opposed to a DMV. Yes, what is the, I'm sorry, yeah, what is the difference between, um, okay, now the titles have changed over the years, okay, yeah. F- from yeah. institutional living to to living on one's own, so what is the difference between a, a DSP uh, from your from your perspective, DSP to personal care aid to aid, you know, a DSP can give somebody a bath <laughs> or shower if they need if they need to, depending yeah. on the situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So major differences for us, and just to break this down, you know, for your viewers, a DSP is a direct support professional. A PCA is a personal care aid, and while a DSP certainly, ours anyway, will be required at times to do personal care. That's not what their entire job is about. It's more to support the life of the individual that they're working in, with. And, and that can mean a variety of different things. Um, you know, providing support mm-hmm. in someone's life, is, it can mean anything from, you know, assisting finding a job helping to figure out transportation to that job. Or helping if somebody wants to learn media, helping somebody learn photography or video stuff, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Some, Some really neat examples that we have, we've got a couple of individuals who we support who are not that this matters, but they're male, and they are super interested in cooking and want to publish cookbooks. And so our DSPs are working together with these two gentlemen in putting, you know, getting the recipes together. It's a long process. I mean, it's not a simple thing to publish a book, let alone a cookbook. So this is something that they're, they're, you know, doing trials of these different recipes, using different foods, testing out the recipes, they did a lot of this over Zoom, in fact, during COVID, but now, thankfully, they're back in and doing this in person. But that's just an example. Uh, our DSPs are helping them to to actually publish and put out a book. Anymore. So there's just, there's so many things that a DSP can can be involved with and do that, that you know, are not the same as a personal care aide. Um, so, um, qu- well, not quickly because we do have time. But uh, what? Um, explain some of the training that you do with the DSPs. Well, we have all sorts of different training. We have training that they are required to take before they can even begin with with us working with any clients, and those are those are going to be pretty much the typical trainings that you would go through for any job. That's going to be. You know, bloodborne pathogens and emer- emergency first aid and um, any any number of emergency medical type situations where they might be in. They we don't want anyone to go out into the field and feel like they're unprepared. Um, but along with that, no one can be prepared for anything. So we do have nurses on staff that are a phone call away when anything ever comes up. And we also have on-call folks that can answer questions like that as well. But um, med delegation is a training that all of our folks take. And you know, sometimes there will be trainings that might be um, lifting. But you know, as, as, of course, as you know, that's not going to be required in every situation. Yeah, for example, my myself, for example, myself, I can't lift too much. I mean, I I do a lot despite my cerebral palsy and my visual impairment, you know, but I I can't lift um, only by so much. (laughs) So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we, when our folks do need to help, you know, assist with personal care or actually lift someone, we want to make sure that, that the employee is not in a position where they're going to hurt themselves either so they need to be trained for that as mm-hmm. well mm-hmm. how does the NADSP help you guys um, or is that like is that a different type of training it is a different 
type of training, and I, you know, right off the top of my head, I can't even think of any good examples for you. So, it's a bad one for me today. I should have been more well versed on that. But, uh, what is the future of uh, Green Mountain Support Services and DSPs? Well, I really believe that with, with the education that is that is being put out there about the job that's entailed with being a direct support professional, I really think this future is looking up for all of us in human services because especially with the, with the COVID situation that we're, we're still going through, but not quite as harsh as it was last year. I no. think that it's, you know, the, the plight of what DSPs are actually doing, what the actual work is, they are a necessary part of, of life in, in every state. And I think that that's finally starting to come full circle and starting to hit home with a lot of people realizing this is this is a difficult job. It's there, so basically, job. long or short of it, or the nuts and bolts, they're soldiers. They're soldiers in the trenches helping people, because Absolutely. because DSPs. If you take a look at Florence Nightingale, for example, mm-hmm. um, who is a loving person who cared about people in hospitals. Um, you know, and the the treatment that people would get because she would see like people bleeding or people not using the proper tools because they weren't uh, they weren't uh, sanitized. Because you know that that's a big thing during COVID. You gotta sanitize everywhere. You gotta you know use soap, use sanitation. So yeah, um, um, so. You can say DSPs are more like soldiers in the trenches helping people who really need them. Yes, yeah, you're, you're spot on, Lawrence. You really are. Yep. Well, we would like to thank Karen Perry for joining us on this edition of Able Then On Air uh, for Green Mountain Support Services. For more information on Green Mountain Support Services, you can, uh, if you want services from them or need information, you can contact Green Mountain Support Services. They're at 93 James Road, Morrisville, Vermont, 05661. Their number is 802-888-7602. That number again is 802-888-7602. Uh, for more information, their website is www.gmssi.org. That's www.gmssi.org. Well, thank you, Green Mountain Support Services. Um, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time. Ableton On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to be home in the community. Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support comes together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yachad, New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Vermont Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition. Able Dinner on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, and www.h.com. Able Dinner on Air is a member of
the National Academy for Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter.